Hey guys and gals, I'll be showing you all my um, my process of how I texture in Substance Painter and how I get my textures in Substance to look pretty much the exact same when I'm taking them into Unity because that's a problem I see with a lot of people whenever they're spending all this time, like hours and hours on these amazing looking textures that look great in Substance Painter. But as soon as you take them into Unity, they just look really flat and boring in comparison. So I'm gonna be showing y'all how y'all can actually fix that and how y'all can really take y'all's textures and properly make them look just as good in Unity as they would in um, Substance Painter for the most part. So um, I'm gonna be showing y'all an example of why this is happening. So here's my outfit that I made not too long ago. Um, it's a little um, yoga outfit set that I made for uh, Zenpia's fit base. If I uh, zoom in here, you can see, you know, these nice folds I put in here for my hide a little bake, these nice seam lines and stuff like that. But if I went into base color mode, all that's gone. It's just two colors. All my work I did making those nice folds and stuff is right down the crapper. It's gone. And that is the problem. When it comes to Unity, base color is like your everything. This is what really mainly shows up. Your normal map and stuff is really not going to show as much with like the shading and stuff as it would in Substance Painter. So I'm going to be showing you all how to really take all those details and actually lay them into your base color just like this. So this is the material I'm going to be showing you all how to make today. And as you can see, we're in base color mode, but it looks like the PBR version. All the details are back in the wrinkles and all that stuff it's all back same thing for the seams all that stuff so i'll be showing you how to make this material today so go ahead and clear everything out here go to material mode so blank canvas make sure your um whatever mesh you have is baked because if it's not baked um it's not going to work because this method is using generated stuff um and also at the end of this you can actually take this I show you how to make and you actually make it into a, um, a smart material so when you're done doing your actual like texturing and stuff or even if you have existing assets um, you can take this material put it on top of everything and it will properly like properly overlay over everything and give you that detail back so this can be a really big help for a lot of y'all's guys assets um, so let's go ahead and go back into base color mode like I said before make sure your stuff is baked we're gonna go to your layers Add a base layer and then we're going to be making it oh come on height not base color <laughs> whoops there we go and we're gonna be making it a little bit on the darker side probably about in the middle in the gray tone area so right in the gray right about in the middle um, this is going to be our base layer so pretty much we have our, we're gonna be having our base layer dark tones and then light tones so once we're done with our base, we're gonna be starting with our dark tones now. So I'm gonna make this black. I'm just gonna name this dark, just like so. And then we're gonna be adding a black mask and then a generator. And then in our generator section, we're going to go to ambient occlusion. And this is what it should look like. Don't worry about it. It's an easy fix. We just press true on the global invert. And as you see here, it's uh, grabbing all of the uh, like seam lines I have, and they're, you can see it's grabbing a little bit of the wrinkle, but we'll add some more stuff to really make everything pop. Um, and it's also grabbing the shading here, like under the chest and in the crotch area, it's grabbing the shading. So once you add this, you can actually adjust this a little bit if you want to. As you can see here, this will do more or less of it. And then I really don't mess with global blur or contrast because it really gets rid of um, a lot of the detail you put in. So I don't really mess with that personally. So whenever I'm doing this, I actually tend, don't focus on things being super dark and ugly at the very moment. Just grab where you want shading to be. So I kind of want like some shading between the legs and under the, the chest. So once I'm done doing that, I actually grab this and I'll switch it to multiply. What this allows it to do is once you click a multiply and you click on the slider and crank it down, you can see it really starts to even out the overall color 
with everything, so it kind of looks more natural. And it looks a little too crazy back here, so I'm probably going to go back into the inclusion modifier and crank this up just a tad bit more. There we go, that's smooth. And then once I get what you like and whatever you get what it, uh, what looks best to you, we can continue on to the next step, which is another fill layer. And we're going to be cranking this all the way up to the brightest setting. And then if it looks too bright to you when you're done doing this, you can tone it back down and you can just do whatever is best. And also I'll recommend taking this layer, which we're just name it light. There we go. And I recommend putting it under this layer so we can keep our actual um, shading we just made. So once again, black mask. And we are going to be adding a generator again. But this time, instead of a ambient, we're going to be using a light modifier. And as soon as you saw me add that light modifier, you can see everything starting to take shape. It's really grabbing all these details back and it's popping it right back into the base color. Um, and I'm gonna, honestly, I like the way it looks right now, but I'm gonna show you all how you can actually um, adjust this if you want to. So um, you shouldn't really be having to mess with the horizontal angle. That's kind of changing the direction of this light, um, but you, should, you want it straight on. So you shouldn't have to mess with this. Um, vertical angle is gonna move it up and down. So if you want, like, want to try it, if it's kind of hiding some details, if it's straight on, you can like, lift up like that. You can see it's kind of showing off more of my um, my lines here and my my um, my folds and stuff and my seams. So I'm gonna actually I like that. I'm gonna keep it like that. And then um, you can actually change the glossiness here. So what this is, it's pretty much how um, shiny it will look or flat it will look. So the more you crank it up, you can see it looks a little more flat. The more you crank it up, it kind of gives it that metallic-y, shiny look. If you're like faking a metallic, this is a great way to do it. You can use a light modifier and you can actually crank up this and you can fake metallics in your base color. Um, but I'm gonna not do that. I kind of want it to look like this. Yeah, I like that. So once this is done, take this light layer that we made and we're gonna be uh, duplicating it. And we are gonna be pretty much moving it back here so you can take the vertical angle and just move it until you see it actually pop up here and i actually like it right there so i think i'm gonna leave it alone and then once you got it to where you like it that's pretty much it you're good to go this is the whole material you can actually go in if you want to and you can you know adjust things to push certain tones out if you want or make it more flat and toony if you want you can easily adjust this, make it look more realistic, more toony. Um, it's a really cool, really cool um, like base material you can make for uh, your stuff. So once you're done with this, to make it a smart material, you just right here, you add base or not base, my bad. For folder, drag it to the top. Grab all this, and you're gonna drag it in here, and you whatever you want the name of your smart material to be is what you name your folder. So I'm just gonna name it base layer. And then if you right click your folder here, you'll see a create smart material. Once you create that, it'll actually add it into your library of smart materials and you're ready to go. So if I turn this off real quick, let's go material mode. And if I like for some reason, I want my whole uh, mesh to be like a color. Let's go ahead and let me find some of the materials here. I slapped on this zebra pattern, for example. Just scale it up. So you can see if, you know, for texturing, it looks really good in here. You know, looks kind of cool and all, but if you go to base color, all that's gone. So if I just took this, put it on top, and I switched it to multiply, and I turned it on, Gotta turn down this a little bit. It's pretty strong. There we go. But yeah, as you can see, it's bringing all that detail back. And it's really, really cool. And it's all on your base color, which is amazing. So that is pretty much how you do this. Um, I really hope this helps you guys out because I know it helps me out a lot. As you can see here, it's just base color mode, and it looks like it's the PBR version itself, but it's just in your base color. Um, so I hope you all like this. I'm going to be also showing some more tutorials on Substance 
in the future of how to um, take like things that you use with like height map data and actually be able to take that data and actually bring it back into your base color as well. I'll be doing that in a, a future video. But other than that, if you guys have any type of like suggestions of stuff you want to learn in Substance, Blender, or anything like that, um, don't be afraid to uh, go to my server down below, go to the tutorial suggestions, and uh, just put in whatever y'all want in there. And if it gets enough, um, like enough reactions or whatever, if enough people want that, I'll highly consider of actually making that as a, a next video for uh, um, the channel. But other than that, I hope this guy's helps you out, hope the tool helps you out and all that stuff and uh, have a good one.